service of Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins in the Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Job's daughters. 
and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark, Lord, he Lord Jesus, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, 
he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Most days it wasn't too bad. People were generally understanding, believing that they had a responsibility to help the poorest and those unable to work. They gave him enough as he sat in the marketplace each day, so he was able to get by. Sometimes it was a really good day with a couple of generous folks, and Bartimaeus was able to have some money in his pocket for a while to buy something extra if he wanted to. There were lean times, too, when he was truly hungry. Being hungry didn't really bother him. The worst thing was not having anything to do. He got antsy. When Bartimaeus was a kid, he used to run around all day getting into trouble with the other boys in, all over Jericho. Then when he started working with his father, he learned how to channel that energy into the work. It served him well. He was always a fast worker, and over time he had developed the skill to do good work really quickly. Well, he couldn't even walk fast now. He would push through the, the lighter crowds early each morning to the place where he and the other beggars sat bumping into people along the way unless some kind soul took his hand to guide him. Once in place, he dared not move, not only because he would have lost his begging spot, but because he could easily get turned around in the, the bigger crowds during the busy part of the day and lost. As he sat there, begging for coins or scraps of food, Bartimaeus would occupy his mind with memories of running. He would imagine himself running through an open field, the kind of running you do when you're young, when you have no place to go, but you just feel like running. And you run so fast that you get going faster than your feet can move, and you almost fall forward onto your face. That was what Bartimaeus would think about while he was begging. 
sitting there, as he did day after day, Bartimaeus was always overhearing people's conversations. You ever want to know the latest? Ask a beggar. They always have the most up-to-date news because people don't really notice them or they think someone like Bartimaeus who couldn't see, maybe couldn't hear either. So, they would talk freely, as if it didn't matter what the beggars heard, after all, they were just beggars. That was how Bartimaeus came to know who was cheating on her husband with whom, and who had deceived his partner in a business deal. Mostly he kept it all to himself. Who would he tell? Who would listen to him? Though the beggars talked plenty among themselves about the latest gossip, they got a vicarious thrill out of the drama of other people's lives. It passed the time, anyway. He heard about other stuff, too, like those who spoke in the marketplace against the Romans, trying to stir up discontent. Others came to, to get attention, to share ideas, to prophesy. Traveling preachers and healers came through town often enough. They always ended up in the marketplace where everyone gathered. Occasionally, someone was healed right there near Bartimaeus. Daniel, someone Bartimaeus knew from his working days who had been injured when a load of stones fell on him and wasn't able to walk, was miraculously healed one day by one of those healers. Bartimaeus usually thought it was a scam, just a way to get money from the crowds. But he knew Daniel, and he knew that he couldn't walk, and he got healed. So any time someone came by, he would shout out for healing. Or if you tried to heal him, chanting, dancing around, making mud with their spit on the ground and putting it on his eyes, calling on the God of Israel or other gods too. Well, none of them helped even a little. It kind of became a game to Bartimaeus. He would shout so loud that the healer couldn't ignore him. Everyone in the crowd knew uh, that he was truly blind. They'd seen him sitting under his cloak and begging every day in the market. Bartimaeus figured it couldn't hurt to be part of this traveling show. It was fun to get the attention for a minute, getting everyone's hopes up as the healer went through his routine. He figured that if it worked, great! Then he'd be able to see again, and to work for a living, and run. If it didn't work, well then, he could have a little fun mocking the guy and getting the crowd to turn on him. It passed the time, anyway. One day, around the hottest part of the day, when things seemed sort of slow in the market, a couple of the other beggars were playing dice to Bartimaeus' right, and someone was snoring to his left, and suddenly there was a ruckus. Down the road, people started to shout excitedly. Bartimaeus heard people running by in that direction. There was a general murmur that was hard to distinguish. Couldn't tell what they were saying. He turned toward the other beggars and asked what was going on. No one seemed to know. The noisy crowd was getting closer. People were right on top of them. At first, Bartimaeus couldn't tell if people were happy about something or if there was something bad happening. As they swirled around him, though, it was obvious that they were excited to see someone, someone big. Who is it? he shouted. No one answered. After all, he was only a beggar. Who is it? he asked again, louder this time. Finally, someone hissed at him in response, It is Jesus of Nazareth, which they said as if to tell him to shut up now that he got the answer to his question. Ah, 
Jesus of Nazareth. Bartimaeus had heard of him. Apparently he was some hick kid from way up north. He'd been traveling around, preaching about the kingdom of God, saying it was near. And he was a healer. This guy was big time. Bartimaeus had heard that he drew great crowds, huge crowds, thousands. He'd heard people talking about Jesus in the market. Some of them had seen him and heard him speak. Some of what he said, well, it seemed a bit difficult to take. He talked about losing your life to gain it. Some such nonsense. But people seemed genuinely impressed with him. They would even whisper that this Jesus may be the Messiah, the one to liberate Judea from the Romans. That was probably part of what made him popular. People thought he could bring the power of God to drive out the legions. He was certainly the biggest thing to come to town in Bartimaeus' memory. There had been other big names, healers, preachers, teachers, revolutionaries, but they usually went to Jerusalem, where all the action was, not to Jericho. There was no way Bartimaeus was going to let this opportunity pass him by. He screamed at the top of his lungs, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. People around him shushed him, telling him not to bother the master. Some laughed at him. That just made Bartimaeus shout louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd hushed. It seemed to stand still. Someone nearby told Bartimaeus to, tark, to take heart that Jesus was asking for him. He jumped up so fast, throwing off his beggar's cloak and leaving it behind in a cloud of dust. That was a day that Bartimaeus would never forget. It was the day that his eyes were opened. The day he saw the sun again for the first time in years. It was the day he met the Messiah. After he regained his sight, Jesus had invited him to follow him. What else did Bartimaeus have to do? He followed. Jesus taught him that the kingdom of God was for beggars and sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors, even Samaritans. Jesus was a revolutionary. He was less concerned about the oppression of the Romans and more concerned about the oppression of sin that holds us all in its grip and keeps us all from seeing the truth. The only time Bartimaeus regretted regaining his sight was when he watched Jesus die on a cross, like a common criminal. What was it that he had said about losing your life to gain it? Even that lesson became clear when Jesus was seen again, alive, by his followers. The kingdom of God came to Jericho that day, and it did not pass Bartimaeus by. He had no idea what was about to happen when that crazy healer from up north asked him that stupid question, what do you want me to do for you? My teacher, let me see again. What else? What else is there? He wanted to see the things he used to be able to see. He wanted the freedom to do whatever he wanted to do. To go wherever he wanted to go. He wanted his life back. 
Jesus opened his eyes that day. And he showed him more than he had ever seen before. He showed him the power of love. He showed him his own importance, that God loved him, Bartimaeus, even if no one else seemed to care. He showed him what true freedom is when we lose our fear and trust in God. Jesus gave Bartimaeus a life, a life that he couldn't imagine before, one that he could not have had if he had not followed Jesus that day. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith as we say together the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. For the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Alan Oz Osborne. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the special needs and concerns this congregation. Please add your own petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Andrew and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Getting on page 360 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. service if you have any questions uh, or if you just have anything you want to talk to her about, she is around. A um, couple of quick uh, reminders, uh, we do have the ordination coming up, uh, uh, Kevin Barron, 
name just went out of my head for a second. Uh, Kevin Barron uh, getting ordained on November 21st. That's the third Sunday of November, and it's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and you're invited to be here with us in person if you'd like to be. We are live streaming it, so that's another option. Uh, we're not quite sure how large that crowd is going to be. Uh, so you kind of judge your own kind of comfort level on, on that. Uh, but do uh, join us one way or another for that and keep Kevin in your prayers. Uh, and finally, we sent out our annual mailing uh, this past, uh, just on Friday, for our uh, stewardship campaign, our, our pledge uh, campaign. So you should have gotten that, or if you haven't gotten it by now, you should be getting it soon. Uh, we're asking for folks to return the pledge card um, by uh, November 7th. Uh, that's a couple of Sundays from now. You can mail it in, you can bring it in, drop it in the plate in church. Um, you can actually uh, pledge online now, and even if you haven't done anything online with our system, uh, you can. There's uh, instructions included in the envelope if you want to do the pledging online. But do know that pledging online and setting up giving online are two separate operations. So if you do the pledge, then it'll knock you over and say, "Do you want to set up for for giving like uh, electronically?" which you can set up to do automatically if you want to do that. If you have any issues with that, just call the office. Uh, Allison will, will talk you through all of that stuff. Um, uh, we're also including our, our uh, theme this year is Give Thanks. So we're including a little card asking you to share with us uh, what we're thankful for uh, this fall as we, we go through uh, the end of the liturgical year and, and almost begin the new year with Advent here in late November, uh, and we will share those as we can without any kind of identifying um, uh, words in there, uh, anonymously in the prayers of the people throughout uh, the fall, and we'll just kind of give thanks along with each other as we do that. Um, I think that's all I got. Any, any other announcements today? Mm -hmm. Even song is coming up uh, the seventh. Two weeks we've got Even Song on uh, the seventh of uh, November, and that's at five p.m. on that Sunday. Um, and then in December we're planning on doing our lessons and carols. So stay tuned for more information about that. Anything else? Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Let us continue our worship with the great thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer D, page 372 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone, our God, have living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. of salvation, the body and blood of 
your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with blessed Andrew and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us, and give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.